Hey there, hi there, ho there. No, no, I'm not doing that intro. That's terrible. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Let's Play series. How you doing today? Doing great here. Things are wonderful, magnificent, terrific, fantastic, better than you. I took it too far, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so what have I been up to here? I've been uh, working on this Llama Vader that uh, we worked on last time. Didn't quite finish it then, but I think it's about good now. Changed all the stone out there to red clay, just so it looks maybe a little bit nicer. Um, and I, I had this thing here, but I think I'm going to change it. So one thing with this elevator is I wanted a way to call the llama up here. So I had like a trap door thing. Um, so if we want to ride the elevator down, we can, basically. So up comes the llama, you hop on. It's a little bit glitchy, <laughs> but uh, not too bad. And then we're down here, and then if we want to go up... It's working pretty good. Somebody said this is going to break in the next patch, though, and I don't know if there's a specific reason for that, or if just because elevators tend to always break every update. I'm not sure. Hopefully it doesn't break, though. I kind of like this thing. <laughs> um, okay, what should we do here? Instead of doing the trap door thing, we'll, we'll do something maybe a little bit more automatic. Yeah, I think we'll do it like this, guys. So we're going to have a button in the corner here that activates the redstone, shoots an item out of the dropper, falls down the hole here, and that triggers the llama vader. We could just jump down here, too, if we want. It's not that far of a fall. It won't kill us if we have feather falling. <laughs> This is a little bit fancier though, right? Except for uh, except for that part of it. Uh, one thing I did down here too is like when we hop on the llama, we go where the tripwire is here. That that activates the thing. Um, but on the way down, we won't don't want the llama to trigger it again. Otherwise, it'll just go into an endless loop of getting launched here. So I put in a T flip flop, so it only activates once, but not the second time on the way down. So. Let's just look at this stuff here real quick. Oh, we activated it. So yeah, this is where the item falls down into the hopper. That gets detected and sends a signal over here. I heard the lump get hurt there. <laughs> I think he's okay though. Like I've been watching his health and he, he isn't dying yet. Uh, the tripwire starts here, activates a piece of redstone into a monostable circuit into the T flip-flop and this has to be set at 1, and goes down to the piston that launches it. So, yeah, kind of a mess, but it's it's pretty simple, actually. Alright, everybody, so for today's episode, I think we're just going to do maybe some random things around the place, maybe some building projects, uh, stuff like that. We recently refined this area here, but it kind of stops, like, here. <laughs> so I would like to make this area polished up a bit more. Uh, we got the Simon game. I don't know if we'll get to that today. That needs to be finished still. And then uh, there's a tunnel here. This is, I think, what we're going to focus on. Let's see. Let's count it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's work with odd numbers always. I like odd numbers. Yes, that would go over here. This will be like the divider for the room. And then we're probably going to have a tunnel of some sort. Uh, have a little idea here I wanted to try out. We really haven't done anything with the concrete blocks or powder yet, and I thought of something fun we could try. I want to try make like a, a changing tunnel here that, that keeps uh, changing the walls so they don't always look the same, and it might be possible with concrete powder. It might be really easy to do, actually. So, yeah, this leads over to the village if we go far enough here. Don't want to make this totally straight, though, because I've learned that's a, a really bad thing to do. <laughs> you want to break it up, otherwise it's it feels really bad, right? So we'll probably go about, like, halfway, and then there'll be a T-intersection, and then we'll go the rest of the way. Best door ever. <laughs> I think I had to sacrifice the wiring because I, I got too close to it or something there. Anyways, uh, so uh, cleared out a little bit of area here for us to get started on the idea. We're going to have our intersection room here, right? And then this is going to be the tunnel. Uh, so let's just play around with this first and see. we got to figure out the function before the beauty, right? That's, that's always the key when you're doing a redstone project. 
try to get it working first and then make it look nice afterwards. So I'm thinking on the left and the right here, we'll have a we'll have walls made out of concrete powder, right? Those will be on top of pistons, and we want to be able to change the pattern. Um, probably using a hopper clock or something. Every so often it'll change. It'll move the the blocks here. So I think all we got to do really, uh, if we want to keep this really simple, is just push the concrete powder up here. And then at the top of the stack, have pistons pushing this way. And I made some levers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just try this out. We'll do one piston at a time here. Uh, so that is over there. So this will get triggered. Push up. This will push sideways. It'll fall down. And then I guess we need pistons here if we want to keep it really small. Could just have a piston there to push it sideways again. I guess we're going to have to activate this piston first and then like two ticks later uh, this one. So it'll It'll raise the block and then sneak one in underneath before these start falling down, right? Uh, so I think we're going to go in here to activate this piston first. Then two ticks later, one, two, uh, we will have to run power up to this piston somehow. Maybe maybe we'll run it along like this. Uh, it doesn't really matter how we do it uh, with our test, test thing here, though. <laughs> so we'll just do that, okay? So... Let's put down a button and just see what happens. We probably need a monostable circuit before this, though. Yeah, we need a monostable circuit. Otherwise, it just does that. Okay, so let's get that in here, too. Uh, we'll just try it out with a piston thing here first. Okay, and redstone dust there. Put a button on top of that. This is really messy, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> But we're doing it together. This is how I work. Okay, that didn't quite work. That didn't quite work. Uh, why would it shove it off? Okay, let's try a different timing here. What if this is at one? I pro it probably needs to be three. That's no good. One, two, three. No, still no good. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're going to have to do it like this, guys. I put a sticky piston here instead. It's going to retract and pull the concrete powder back here. But this piston will still be powered. So as soon as this retracts, it updates this piston, causing it to extend with, like, no delay between the two. And that'll push the concrete powder up. So it's going to do this, basically. That's how you do it. And this is set at two. We have have to use a redstone torch, I think, though, here. Uh-huh, monostable circuit here. And I ran a wire up to this piston just so we can try, like, doing a loop here to see if it works. So, for example, we could have gravel on one side and concrete powder on the other. Would look pretty ugly, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll come up with a, a cool licking pattern. But this should be able to switch between a, a white concrete wall and a gravel wall. Uh-huh, something like that. That's the idea. I just topped over to the zombie pigment farm, guys. Got to do a tool repair here. I don't carry the bow with me anymore, right, for flying. So <laughs> I need a, a, a pigment in the middle here. I can just smack. But this is what I've been doing uh, until I get that here anyways. Uh, I just throw an ender pearl up in the middle. And then I ender pearl and hit one of these guys. And then I land over here. <laughs> it's my lazy way of activating the farm. Seems to work pretty good, actually. Woohoo! All right, so I've been making some good progress here, guys. Just about got this all done. Uh, got the redstone stuff mostly figured out, and it's it looks really nasty right now. I just want to show it to you before we cover it up, though. Uh, so, like in our test example here, or from before, uh, does the same thing except now we have a big line of pistons. I think I made this 11 blocks long. Um, and, you know, if this is a, a cool thing, we might do this more, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, so it pushes the gravel up, and then at the top there, there's some pistons that push it sideways, and then it falls down. So in total, that's three pistons per column. Um, and a piston can push up to 12 blocks, right? So I think it pushes 12 blocks up, 
and then double that on the other side roughly maybe 23 24 blocks uh, in total here we could add more blocks if we add more pistons but then it gets more complicated so we're gonna keep it simple here and honestly like this doesn't take up much space because it's only two blocks wide right you could easily have moving walls guys everybody should do it it's the future I tell you <laughs> uh, no probably not but it, it'll be a fun little thing here I like to try add something new to, to each part of the man cave here so it doesn't become repetitive, you know? Uh, so yeah, let's just check this out real quick. So sticky pistons get powered by this line here. This is our redstone torch. Uh, goes over to here to a two tick repeater. And then that powers this big line of, of pistons down below here. Uh, from this, let's see. There's really not too much to this. Yeah, from this, this is our monostable circuit here. Um, that just goes and activates this on both sides. So, I fall down hole. <laughs> I do that a lot, don't I? Uh-huh. I think I do that every episode. Uh, so, just copied it on the other side here. And then there's also the line that goes up to the pistons up above. So let's go check those out too. Just runs up a staircase thing here. And over to this. So it's not super complicated, really. Mm -hmm. So if this is 24 blocks or so, right, and we have a wall that's five blocks tall, divide that by five, you can have four completely different walls within our, our block limit there, right? If it's a seven block wall, seven block tall wall <laughs> we're trying to make, then, uh, you know, 23 or 24 divided by seven, you could easily fit three completely different walls within our, our blocks here. So... Not quite sure what we're going to do with it just yet, or how, how tall our wall is going to be. Um, or we could just shift the wall so it moves one block at a time. But I think we'll just make it so you can change it to a completely different wall with the push of a button or, or by a hopper timer running. So yeah, th we'll probably have some sort of border running along here. I made sure we could uh, keep this all flat if we wanted to. So let's just fill this in with uh, grass right now. I don't know if that's what's going to be in the end of things here, but that'll give us an idea of what the room's going to look like and, and how tall we should make the walls and that kind of stuff, uh, just by how it feels. So it's, it's a pretty wide room. I did it that way so like the walls can actually be seen. Like if, if the roof is really short and the walls are like right in our face, like over here, you won't really be able to see them too well, right? So... I think this will be good. And if it's only five blocks tall, one, two, three, four, five. Well, five blocks tall is pretty tall, actually. Let's see. So if, if we kind of block off that space, that's, that's a five block tall room. That's not bad, actually. Okay, so I just uh, framed this in for right now uh, to give us a better idea of where our, our moving wall is going to be, right? And this room feels pretty good to me the way it is. I don't think we should go any taller. Like, five blocks is quite a bit already. Don't, shouldn't go to six or seven, I don't think. Um, I kind of like this, too. Like, we have a narrow uh, doorway here. So as we walk forward, then the, the pictures on the left and right here will get revealed. Has that reveal feel to it, you know? Reveal feel? Uh huh? <laughs> um, and we can see it with our peripheral vision, right? We don't even have to like turn to the right or left to see him. We'll see him as we walk by. So now comes the tough part. We actually have to do some art here or, or make some walls that look cool. And I might not know what to do here. <laughs> Should we try do a mural as one of the walls? Not only do I have to design one wall, I have to design like four... And possibly four more if we don't keep them the same on the other side. I'm not sure. Okay, let's just copy what we kind of did in our tree farm, though. We'll make, like, uh, grass and sky and see what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty bad. Yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> the color contrast between the two is just way too sharp. Okay, I do like the blue, though. I think the blue looks pretty nice. Maybe we'll just mix in another blue block with the, the light blue here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I might need some guidance here, guys. 
uh, help me out with uh, what colors I should actually be using for this room, maybe. Like, I don't know if I should keep this as grass and, like, this wood stuff. It feels like it doesn't really go with the concrete powder, right? Uh, even the different colors will probably have trouble. But uh, just did a simple pattern here. Maybe too simple, I'm not sure. I guess, like, if we're walking by here, though, we're not going to be staring at it, right? We're, it's going to be off on the side. So you don't want it too complicated. Otherwise, it's it's going to be disturbing as we walk by. Maybe. I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I guess I'll try to just do four simple patterns like this and uh, see what it's like. So I'm going to do, uh, like, a yellowish one, maybe a grayish color one, and or, or a brown and maybe a purple one and just see what that's like. All right, are you ready for this? Here we go. <laughs> so I got uh, four different patterns here. And ideally we want to set this up so this gets pressed like five times in a row automatically without us doing it, right? Uh, set it up on a, a hopper timer that activates randomly. So maybe today's a blue day when we walk down the tunnel or maybe it's a gray day. Um, just tried a couple random patterns here. This one's not too bad either. I think it's okay. Uh, there is one that I don't don't really like though. I did a yellow and orange one here. Kind of a stripey thing. I think this one's pretty good to you. I'm happy with that. But then uh, I did a purple and blue. <laughs> this one uh, maybe should be changed. The colors are. If, if we keep this grass anyways, something about these colors is just not right. Uh-huh. Anyways, it's it's kind of a goofy, random idea. thought you guys might like it, though. And it, it'll make our tunnel a little bit more interesting here. Uh-huh. Anyways, so this goes to over here. This is our pixel. I think we'll put in a window where we can uh, view the redstone wiring. And then there'll probably be the like a big room over here, right? So it's not uh, not a total straight straight area. Uh, so we'll have the window on this side. There'll be like a an intersection that goes this way, and then probably not straight through here. We'll go over a few blocks and then start going straight this way again towards the village. Is the plan? But I think we'll do something else here for today's episode and uh, break things up a bit. Okay, so I just checked and we don't have a whole lot of time left this episode, but we're going to try to do a quick project before we finish it. Uh, first, I want to show you the mushroom farm, though. So I have been working on this. I finished building the sun shield over top the mushrooms. I uh, decided to do that instead of using just string. Like, uh, we have the podzel here, right? So we can just put string above the mushrooms without blocking out the light. But we're going to do the sun shield just because it's going to make it a lot easier to... Uh, to put in the water streams here. I'm going to put dispensers on top of this with water buckets in, and then we just have to run a wire down the middle here to activate them all. And then that'll flush all the mushroom drops towards these holes, and they'll get picked up. So that's going to be a, a nice, simple way of doing that. We need more orange sand to finish this build, though. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make one of these uh, orange sand make a roo machines <laughs> and try to semi automate it so this turns this yellow sand into orange sand it's kind of a glitch in the game but uh, I'm okay with it and uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do it but not over here we're gonna build it at uh, kind of in the sandy city area I think makes sense cuz sandy city sand you know <laughs> so let's head over there I picked out a spot already uh, you guys might have noticed I have I have done a little something here too, so I extended this path a little bit uh, a while ago, and I've started building like random stairs and stuff in this mountain here. We have these really cool mountains, and they're not really being being used. Um, so what I would like to do is maybe make a a cool looking bridge here eventually. They'll go through a tunnel here, and then if we want to build like in a snowy area. That's that's what's going to be over here. It'll go up on top of the mountains, and and we can, we can do some snow themed or ice themed things, and just put some some random things here to see how they look. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to put our red sand maker machine just over there in this little area. Uh, don't have a lot of space here, but it's also not going to take up a, l a lot of space, I don't think. So this will 
this will be good. And then we can connect the path to this and hopefully make it look like a little shack or something. But we'll see. Uh, so I decided I want to put the pistons at eye level here. So it's going to be easier to place the sand inside this thing. And then we have to have two sticky pistons here. Two sand blocks above this. I don't know. I think you can just use any sand block. I don't think it matters. Or any block with gravity. And above these pistons, you definitely need to use slabs. You can't use full blocks. And on top of those, redstone. Okay. And now I think all we got to do is have repeaters over there. Let's go up so we can actually see. One of these has to be set at two and one of them at one. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why I changed that. Oh, and I fall down again. Okay, we're going to try sink this into the ground a little bit so it uh, doesn't take us up as much vertical space either. And then over here we need a monostable circuit, so just a, a sticky piston with a block on it. Okay, now to activate this, we're probably going to use an observer block. So every time we place a sand block, it will trigger. Um, so maybe let's test this first to see how it works. So I think, um, I think we might put the orange sand block on that side and yellow on this side. And let's just set this up so we can trigger it. Okay, do that, and then a repeater or something, or dust would work even. And do we have a button? Let's make a button. Put that on here. So will this make orange or yellow sand? Let's find out. Okay, yellow sand turned into orange sand. That's what we want, so this is where we're going to be using it. So I'm just going to put the observer block like facing us here. Oh, other way. <laughs> uh, like over here. That'll probably point into a block and then go up to here. So let's break this again. All right, and maybe put a repeater here so it doesn't connect. I'm trying to build this with you so you can see how to do it if you want to copy it. Okay, something like that. So I think every time we place a block here now, it'll trigger. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, I guess this pushed it and then this uh, pulled it. <laughs> it's like, how did that move at two blocks? That's insane. Uh, okay, so let's try this. Yeah, that's what we want. So then we're going to want uh, the sand to fall and break, right? So this is going to be our center. And I want a bunch of storage for all the sand so we can hopefully AFK here for a while and collect a bunch. So probably going to do one, two, um... Actually, three double chests is probably fine. We'll break the bottom one here. Don't need that much storage. Even three might be overkill. I'm not sure. And then we'll have a hopper going into these. So, oh, I'm flying. <laughs> Do something like that. Did you guys see they announced on, uh, on Twitter that they're adding parrots to the game? We're finally getting birds. It's going to be so cool. Uh, that, that spawn in the jungle, apparently. So I'm l really looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll be easy to get them to spawn in. And we don't have to travel super far to get them. Oh, that has to go down one more block. Whoops. Okay, we had it right the first time. Let's see if we can reach that bottom chest from up here, though. Doesn't look like it. We can reach, we can reach this one. Maybe we'll just do two double chests and, and call it good. <laughs> Uh, that way, this gets a lot simpler. And put this over here. Good. Yeah, two double chests of storage is probably plenty. Plenty of sand. And now, what we, what do we want to do? We want to be able to AFK here, right? So, uh, our one stack of sand is going to run out really quick here. We want to be able to feed ourselves more yellow sand as we use this. So, let's put in a dropper. Maybe facing that way so it'll shoot the sand at us and I guess here let's get some trap doors too because we'll probably have to stand on those or I guess we could use slabs and still be able to open the chest here right yeah that'll work too okay good so inside here we're gonna have our sand um, to get sand into there or to activate it first Let's see, the observer goes into this block, so then all we got to do is, like, something like this. 
even put a block there. Or actually, it, it probably needs some sort of delay too. So let's let's try this first. Redstone dust into it like that. So now if we put down sand, what happens? Yeah, it shoots two of them. We only want it to shoot one. So we're going to use an, a repeater. Uh, so it'll hopefully only trigger once. That will probably have to be set at like three or four. Let's try it one at, at one first. Okay. Still shot twice. Let's switch that to two. Three. There we go. That's what we want. Cool. So that seems to be pretty good. You get one sand every time we place the sand. Uh, for extra storage, I'm gonna, just going to run a dropper into the side here. And then probably put like a, a chest above that or two, two double chests here. We can put another one like this if we want. All right. And then fill this up with the yellow sand. So it'll auto feed into us. Uh, what else do we got to do here? Um, there was a problem. Like if we try to hold right click here. You see we place two blocks and then it blocks the view. So if we put a sign or something here. If we build this up and then put a sign over here. Then if we hold right click. It'll never place an extra block. So I think that's that's what we're going to do. Uh, and kind of frame this in a little bit. And probably cover this up if we want. And I think we're just about done with this. What else could we do to it? I guess we're going to want a door or something so the mobs don't come kill us while we're using it too. And some way of getting to our chest here. So maybe a trap door will work here. And then do something like that. So we can just open this, get our stuff and close it. Well, anyways, guys, I think we'll wrap up here for today, and we'll try to decorate that next episode, or I'll do it off camera. But uh, here is the comment I picked out. It says, hey, Etho, have you ever thought about doing a Factorio Let's Play? It's definitely the kind of game you would be good at, and I think it would be really interesting to watch. So I have played Factorio. I love the game. It's a great game. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm very good at it, though. Like, I'm not, I'm not Zisto level <laughs> expert or anything like that. Um, so I don't know how, how good of a series I could actually do on it. I, I would struggle quite a bit. Um, kind of like as a more of a learning series than me telling you how to play the game really well or anything like that. Um, a lot of people have asked for a series on it, but yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure about that. I have considered playing uh, RimWorld, though. That's a game I'm actually good at and is very complicated, kind of like Factorial. Uh, also, Oxygen Not Included just came out recently, too. So I might do a series on that, like a short one. It's a little bit simpler than RimWorld, but a, a similar kind of game. Uh-huh. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you have any feedback or comments, leave it down below. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.